Carpentry and antiques are my passions. Through the years, I have amassed various collections as well as useful woodworking skills. I have learned that just by keeping your eyes open while earning a living, you can learn a lot. I'm always looking for ways to do things differently and deviate from what's conventional. Join me on a journey of education and entertainment through projects and adventures. My name is Austin Tischler, and welcome to my channel. Okay, so this is episode two of the firewood bin. Um, the roof is all complete. And now I just have to decide. I think I'm going to put a mullion strip here and then somewhere over here and then cap that in the same aluminum and then that's where those six by sixes will go in between there so i forgot actually the first thing i have to do is put the roof underlayment on backwards Now that I've got all of the black backdrop on, I can put these mullion pieces in. Now that I've got those on, I can break the metal to cap over them. Now to put this on, is pretty simple. Just kind of flex it out and shove it up over there. start at the bottom so I sure you can see it. There. And if I think it needs it, I can put a few staples, like pneumatic staples, close on this side 
just because they'll all be covered. But I think that's on there pretty tight. I don't think that'll really come off. So I'll go do the another one and then get started on the six by sixes. So now what I'm gonna do is take all these um, six by six cutoffs and space them just randomly so they're all at random depth. So now that I step back, I see this kind of turned out like a pattern. Uh, I didn't really realize that at the start, but yeah, I might have to take some of those off and flip them around, but that's pretty much the idea anyways, is just to have random depths of boards. I'll see what I can do about that. So I seem to be having trouble locating rough sawn lumber for the wood bin. Um, I phoned around to the local lumber yards here and none of them seem to have any. They don't know what I'm talking about. It's kind of frustrating. I guess that's the problem with doing things differently is nobody <laughs> seems to know what you're doing or what you're looking for. So I came out to the farm here and I remembered um, I had all this lumber, this rough sawn stuff. Looks like it was used for concrete forms at one point. And I started loading all that up, but I don't really have enough of it, and a lot of it's rotten, and I'd have to rip these. And But then I remembered I had all of this hardwood floor over here. I'll show you. So I've got all of this. Um, looks like oak maybe, or not too sure, it's too rotten, but I've got all of this, and I definitely have enough of this, and it's like all painted or stained on the front, so I'd put it on backwards, I guess, and it would be a little bit of a rougher look, um, I might still be able to stain it, I don't really know, but some of it's really rough I might have to kind of pick through and get the better pieces but these are pretty long um, I'll see if I can fit them in my truck might have to tie them down but I'll load these up and see if I can work with those okay so these are just gonna be way too long um, so as much as I don't want to do this because I just cleaned my truck and these are really dirty I'm gonna have to stick them through the back window so I started with the louvers on this side. I got them stained and I just wanted to try a few out before I put it on video just to make sure it would work, but it looks like it's gonna work. So I'll show you the process that I do for that. So first thing I'll do with this chunk of hardwood is square up an end. Then I'll just hold it approximately where it's going to go and scribe it on to get it held. This might be a two-person job. Got a line scribed on the back there so I know where to miter it. So 
So I've got all the levers fastened and in place. Um, I just have to stain them a little bit and they're pretty rough on the back. Like they're like essentially a rough saw and they're not as rough as I would have liked, but they're rough enough. So when I stain these, um, I'll pretty much just have to stain them once and that's it. As they weather, I think they'll just kind of get darker. It's so rough, the stain will penetrate really good and it won't peel off or anything. And then I still have to figure out something to do with the back, but we'll get these stained up for now. So I'm using this, um, I call it Sicken Stain. I think they renamed it Sicko Stain, uh, but it's like a really good quality log and siding stain. So it's kind of meant for the rougher woods, I guess. So I take a fairly liberal amount because this is so rough and just brush it work it in really good. Um, it takes quite a bit. It soaks it in really good and it turns out a nice rich bright color. It's a fairly warm look. But yeah, I just like to put it on thick so I'm not, you know, wrecking the brush and I just want to ha have to stain this one time. I don't want to have to come back and do this in five years or however long. Just do it once and it will weather the way it weathers. I think it will just turn darker, but something like that turns out really nice. So I'll finish these up and show you the finished product. So all stained up, I think this looks pretty good. It has a really nice warm color to it. Looks nice in the sunlight from the front. So that was episode two of the firewood bin video. Um, I'm gonna have to do an episode three just because it's taking too long to do it. Um, like I said before, all these wood cutoffs on the ground are going to go along here and I think I changed my mind about what I'm going to do over here. I think I have access to some old like nine inch cedar siding so I think I'll flip that around to the rough sawn side, stain it the same teak color and put that up along here and maybe around this corner and then just do these wood cutoffs right here. I think that might look a little bit better, but we'll see. So thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for episode 3.